Hello, and welcome to Alnit With You. My name is Rebecca. You can find me on Ravelry, Instagram, and Steam as Evil22. You can find journals on the blog, alnitwithyou.blogspot.com, or you can find the group on Ravelry, Alnit With You. Hi guys, how are my owls and my use? I feel like every June just completely disappears. Um, and I blame a lot of that on the Harry Potter Knit Crochet House Cup. Obviously, let's start off with some blather because I'm just going to go for it. Um, because every June is the middle of the term, which means it's crunch time. And all the projects you've been working on, you've got to get done. And there's just so much. I mean, I can't tell you how many nights I've just stayed up later than usual because I've been knitting like crazy on something. Which is also a good thing, but um, it means I get up later and then I don't podcast because I'm exhausted. And so maybe it's not a good thing. So I do have a lot of stuff to show you guys. But first, as we are already doing, let's start off with some exciting blather. Um, I have been doing the hashtag socks for CC and I'm a little stalled out. Um, I will show you those in a minute. But if you are knitting a CC design, please do hashtag it. Hashtag socks for CC. Uh, buy patterns from her, benefit her for her move um, because she's moving back to the States and she's awesome. So we should give her dollars. And if you do, your socks get two entries in the spring summer spectacular sock along cow. So please, 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 please participate. And if you don't know what the spring summer spectacular sock along cow is, um, oh gosh, it is spectacular, right? Let's just say it is because I always forget the other S's. It is a knit along that we are doing in the group um, where we are knitting socks all summer because socks are light and won't make you sweat to death, which is awesome. Um, and every single sock, instead of pairs of socks, every single sock gets an entry uh, because I am a huge fan of just knitting one sock. And I also have terrible second sock syndrome, which is just the worst. So knit your socks and enter them. And speaking of, and we do have a winner. This is actually the May winner because I didn't podcast in June to tell you who the winner was. I'll be pulling for June, for June's winner, um, sometime in the next week and hopefully we'll get back to podcasting regularly so that you will know who that is sooner than this one. But this is the May winner. Um, it is Siberian Cat number 49. She knit Mrs. What Weasley's family socks in the Nora, I wrote this down wrong, Nora George spring set. They're gorgeous. They're completely gorgeous. She totally deserved to win. Um, and Siberian Cat, if you do not remember what the prices are, you can have the Knit Wit Victory Socks, which is green yarn. You can have the Van Gogh, wait, is this Van Gogh? I'm gonna say the wrong thing. This is the Pablo Picasso yarn that I bought in New York. It's gorgeous. It is based off the painting Mediterranean Landscape, if that's more your thing. Or if you feel like you've got enough sock yarn, you can go with the Knit Sock Bag, which is a bag that I previously purchased. It has scissors, measuring tape, and the, um, oh gosh, what does it say? The sock ruler. I love these things because they help me get my feet the right size because I had a problem with that apparently. So decide what you want. Let me know. I did not buy any new prizes for you guys in June because I'm about to go to SSK and buy so much yarn. So <laughs> there will be prizes from SSK. I don't know what they are yet because I haven't been yet, but look forward to that. Um, and if you don't like the current prices, you are able to say, I'm gonna wait till there's more. You can pick what you've got right now. It's up to you. Um, as long as you claim your prize before the contest is over. That's what matters. Um, you can go ahead and say, hey, I saw this, but I'm gonna wait. Like, just let me know that you saw it, basically. So easy, right? I just, I just like easy counts. No rush, no fuss. Lots of winners, that's what we need. Um, if I end up with extra prizes, I like if I buy more things for you guys than I need to. Um, I may draw extra winners, like all over winners, um, because at the end of the thing, I would like to have more than one winner. You know, not just in a once a month thing, but also like maybe three or four. We'll see how much yarn I can afford. <laughs> right? That's kind of that's kind of an important part. Okay, so let's move on to other parts of blather. Um, I started a really interesting journal, and I know you're saying Rebecca, we talk about it in a notebook like every single podcast, and it's getting a little crazy. This is different. Of course, they all are, aren't they? Um, this is what I found it as is the um, the five-year journal. Now, I'm not doing that quite the way that it's prescribed. So Lechtrum, how do you say that German notebook? Um, they have like a few quick lines a day or something like that is what it's called. And it's every day of the year has a page. And then there's just a spot 
where you write like three lines, but that's not going to fill the whole page. So what you do is every year you write a few lines, right? Kind of like a diary, but um, one sentence. And I actually do keep a diary because I like to have like a brain dump at the end of the day, um, which is really, just really therapeutic for me. So the idea of this one though is that you date the top of your page, like this one, and then you write one line for every year. And I did the math date. There's 35 lines. By the time I finish this, I'll be 64 or 65. 60. I'll be 60 before I finish this notebook. Did you hear what I said? I kind of had like a miniature heart attack when I said it to myself. I'll be 64 or 5 when I finish this notebook. Ridiculous. So, um, as you can see, I have put May 20th, and then I was like, oh yeah, I went to the Black Sheep Fiber Guild, which is my local guild, blah, 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 um, where I started our Instagram. By the way, the Black Sheep Fiber Guild that I'm in has an Instagram because we also have an Etsy store, and there's tons and tons and tons of beautiful stuff if you feel like buying hand spun yarn or completed items. I don't advertise it here because I am not the guild. Does that make sense? Like, you didn't come here to see the guild stuff. If you would like to see the stuff that we make, follow the Instagram. Um, I will put a link in the show notes and in the group page, but do not feel like you have to. Um, although I do put a lot of my hands put in there, so. <laughs> but it's up to you guys, whatever. Um, anyway. So the idea of this is that then, you know, every year I'll write on here, but it'll be easy to see like what I did the previous year since it's all on one page. And I'm really excited. Um, so instead of buying the 45 whatever dollars it cost Leech Charm journal, I am using the ARC disc bound system, which I already own. And I bought a couple of, actually bought their printed paper for it because I really like the layout of everything and to design my own is kind of a pain. And one of my friends is borrowing my hole punch, so it would have been like awful. I don't have a way to punch the holes and it would all be loose until they gave it back to me, which who knows how long that's going to be. So I opted to buy more of this. It's really nice because it has like a larger spot at the top for the date and then just lines. But that way all of my stuff will match. Um, and this paper does seem to be pretty fountain pen friendly, which is important to me now because I use fountain pens because I'm seriously fancy. Um, but it'll be funny to see, you know, in 35 years if I stop doing that and go back to ballpoint, I'll laugh and be like, oh, look at my silly glitter inks that I used when I was younger. Anyway, kind of a fun idea. Um, if you want to start one, it's super easy. You just have to have a notebook that has at least um, whatever 365 is divided by two because you want a front and a back of each page, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I don't know. I just thought it was a really fun idea because, like, how much is my life going to change in the next 34, five years? Hopefully, a heck of a lot. So we'll see. I'm also putting when I finish a project on there. So like, I'll be like, hitchhiker. Finished my hitchhiker today or something like that. So I thought that would be a really cool like, way to see. I know that's in Mallory already, but like, you don't go back and look for dates usually. Like, oh, did I, what projects did I finish this day, you know, five years ago? So anyway, that's my thing. It's got two different covers. I haven't, I haven't decided on the covers yet. That's pretty easy to switch out. Um, and the nice thing is, is if they get torn up, just replace the page. No big deal. It's the disband because, you know, if I spill coffee on a page and need to redo it, I can pull the page out and stick it back in. I really like that part of it. So that's why I went with this design instead of like a bound journal. So anyway, there's that. That's one thing I'm working on. Um, my brain just went whoop. Um, I received a box of Hexy Puffs from another knitter. I didn't ask to tell you their name, so I'm not going to tell you their name because that's weird. Like what if they don't want people to know that they're milk like, puffs. Um, she had knit a ton of Hexy Puffs and was giving up on her blanket. It's actually her phone. I've just dropped a ton of them. And she was like, does anybody want my puffs? And I was like, yeah, can I have them? And so she mailed me a completely packed box of puffs. Um, it was like bulging when I got it. And uh, they're gorgeous, you guys. She made the most beautiful puffs. This one has, st oh, sorry. This one has stars on it. Um, she did color work puffs, which I've never gotten to. She did an octopus puff, and this is one of the ones that I really wanted to make, but I don't like fiddly puffs. So I'm excited about that. Most of them are not connected, so I will connect them in my own way. I'm hoping to take a picture with her puffs and my puffs, like all laid out together, so I can kind of get an idea of how big I've gotten this to be. Um, and I need to put this in a better bag anyway. So if I do that before I'm done editing the podcast, I will put the picture in the podcast. If not, you'll see it sometime soon. Um, there is the strut your puff thread in the group if you would like to talk about hexy puffs or post some of your own. Um, I am all for seeing more and doing more. I do try to make at least one a month. It's a really easy way to get a class in for the Harry Potter and Crochet House Cup. Um, and I'm always working on a new blanket. Blankets and notebooks, you guys. I have a problem with both. But I don't mind because if that's what I enjoy, then that's what I should spend my money on. Right? Like, that's kind of how life should work. 
That's how, speaking of, <laughs> so I use this fantastic app called Ibotta, I-B-O-T-T-A. I'll put a link in the show notes. Um, and I recently discovered that you can, you have to click the link from their app, right? But you click the link from the app and you can buy stuff in the iTunes store and get rebates on it. It's six cents a song about when they're $1.29. Um, or if you buy movies, you get like a couple dollars back or whatever. And I have, I'm an Apple fanatic. I've got Apple TVs and laptops and phones because uh, the Apple TV is like a Kindle Fire. It's, or I'm sorry, like a Fire Stick. Uh, it's just a little thing you attach to your TV. It's not an entire TV. That'd be ridiculous. But um, anyway, so since I already buy all that stuff through Apple, I can actually just get rebates on it now, which I was already buying them, so why not? Um, and it was awesome. And I got, I've been, use, I use this all the time for shopping because what it was originally made for was when you go out and grocery shop, you get rebates on your food instead of coupons beforehand. And then once you get $20, you can cash out. Um, and their app design is really nice as compared to some of those cash out apps. I don't like them as much. Um, and I don't know how long I had it, but I earned about $25. $25 was the cost of one, which I realized that's expensive, which is why I had not purchased it. Um, one of the pins I was looking at, a uh, fountain pen, it is the Kaweco Sport. This is a very tiny little pin. And I like it because it's so, so stinking tiny. So I wish I should have brought like a regular size pin to show you. But for scale, um, here is like a tapestry needle, right? It's a little itty bitty thing. This is maybe like four or five inches. Um, and I really like it because even though it's so short, when you unscrew it and post it, that's when, when you put the cap on the back, uh, it becomes a much longer pin, right? So it went from being this tall, like the height of my pointer finger, to being this tall, which is maybe an inch taller than my pointer finger. So it adds an extra inch. So it goes from a tiny pin to a tall pin. I like it. Um, and they write fantastically. So this is, I cashed out and used the cash out money to buy one of these. So I basically got this pin for free by using the iBotta app, which was just awesome. I mean, nothing is better than free things ever, right? Uh, so I just got really excited with that. I wanted to share it with you guys because I love you and I want to talk to you about everything. So that's, okay, one more, one more blather, one more blather. I just feel like I haven't talked to you guys in so long. I have so much stuff to tell you. Um, so Eat Sleep Knit, the shop that I love the most to buy the yarn from on the internet, right? Um, they are moving. They, they built their own store, um, which meant, of course, a moving sale. Yes. Um, and so I'd been waiting and kind of like saving up all my store credits and stuff like that. And, you know, just being patient. I haven't bought a lot of yarn this year because I'm doing much better on the yarn diet, which we'll talk about later. Um, but I did buy some things. So I bought two sweater quantities. I'm, uh, the first off, I totally splurged because everything was on sale. Um, and then on top of that, there was a discount. And on top of that, I had some store credit. So I got the Handmaiden Mini Maiden in the charcoal colorway. I used this yarn for the, um, the shawl cardigan thing. I should roll this down. That I made last summer. It is the softest, most amazing yarn. It has fantastic drape. Um, it is, uh, Swiss Mountain Silk. Hand dyed in Canada, one of a kind. Um, I'm trying to find the content. Oh, 50% silk, 50% wool, uh, which explains why it's amazing. And it is totally amazing. A uh, total splurge. Um, not cheap yarn, but it has crazy, crazy yardage. It's like, um, what does it say? It's 546 yarns per, yards per skein. Yarns. Yards per skein. Um, so I bought a sweater quantity of this. And then, um, this was on mega huge sale. This is Dream in the Calm Base. This is American Wool. It's a light worsted. Um, and this is the Pama Grenade colorway. I originally bought one skein of this for my, um, Persian Dreams blanket, but I ended up buying a sweater quantity of it for a sweater. And I know it's a single ply, so I know that means pilling, right? Um, I don't think I've ever knit a large garment from a single ply, but here's what I was thinking. There's this cardigan called the Trago. I'm looking at my notes. Sorry, you guys. The Trago by Melissa Shashawari. There's a lot of CHs in that name. I'm really not sure how to say it, but it looks gorgeous. And um, you knit on a size 8 to 10 needle because, I mean, there's a range of sizes for, like, cuffs and stuff like that. Because it's supposed to be a really loose, loosely knit, uh, like a loose, um, fabric. Because you knit on really big needles, right? You see where I'm going with this? And 
uh, there's a badge I have not gotten yet for the Eat Sleep Knit thing where you have to knit a thing in two weeks. So I'm thinking since the scale is so large, I'm already working with a worsted weight. The needles are you know between 8 and 10 size. Um, and it's a cardigan, which I freaking love cardigans. And SSK is coming up so I can put it in the try it on room. I think I can get this done before SSK. SSK is like the week of the 20th, I think. Um, I want to say it starts on the 18th. That may not be right. I've got a lot of things happening in the next few, <laughs> next few months, so I'm a little bit boggled. Um, but I think I can finish it before then if I start ASAP. Does that seem ridiculous to knit something for the Try It On Room? No, no it doesn't, because I love the Try It On Room at SSK. Um, which, if you don't know, SSK is sleep, no, so it's not sleep, it's the Super Summer Knit Together. Hosted by the Knit Girls, which I am going to. It's in July and I'm so excited. It's almost here. That's where I'm also going to buy all the yarn for the giveaways and the whatnots. So anyway, that is my big plan for July, which we are now in, to knit a whole freaking cardigan in less than two weeks. Can I do it? Yes, I can. Will I sleep? That is to be decided. So anyway, um, let's Move on from all this blather to blobbins. Lots of bees today. So one of my goals with this term is to finish up all these half spun yarns. I've got all these yarns that I start spinning and then the month ends and I never finish them. But as I have mentioned about this thing a thousand times, the Harry Potter Knit Crochet House Cup, uh, which if you don't know, I did a whole explaining, explanatory, there we go, podcast in the past, um, which you can find, I believe, it's labeled pretty obviously. So if you go to the YouTube page and you just search for it, or you can search the show notes. It's up to you how you want to find it. Anyway, so, right. Uh, if you don't finish something within the month that you started it, you can't turn it in for homework class. Um, most of the spinning I do, I do for OWL, which are like really big projects, but I don't ever finish them and turn them in so they're still half spun, right? So what I'm doing is I'm finishing all these half spun yarns and turning those in for classes, which means I've got two to show you. So the first one I finished was Egyptian Soil. This is an art bat, and then I'm for the for one ply, and the other ply are these solid color yarns that I had three different colors, so there'll be like one section of orange, one section of teal, one section of green. And I thought about splitting the yarn, but I think I'd like to keep it together and knit like a really big shawl or something out of it, and then have that like all blendy together, right? So, um, as you can see, this one is actually just the leftover, I, my bottom ran out of space. Uh, this is the leftover of the orange ply yarn. And then here is everything else. Oh, there's like sun. Uh, I think it's totally, totally gorgeous. And there's sparkle in it and all sorts of craziness. Um, and oh, the sun is like messing up my, my yarn. There we go. Um, it's perfect. It's wonderful. Let me if I pull it back here. There we go. Um, this is totally freaking gorgeous. I love it so much. So that was the first one I finished. Um, the second one I finished, um, I call this Raspberry Mint. Oh, the first yarn, sorry you guys, was 565 yards ply to ply, or about 100, I'm sorry, or, or about 1,130 singles. Pretty awesome. This one is Raspberry Mint. It's the same kind of concept, art bat for one ply, and then a solid maroony color for the second ply. See? Um, it's got some mint colors in there. Let me get that really close for you guys. Mint colors. Um, this light is weird because I'm trying to be farther away from my windows and my face isn't all washed out, but now there's like sunlight right in between me and the camera. See how it's like on my hand, but then I'm, yeah. Anyway, you guys understand how light works, right? Anyway, so this yarn is awesome. Uh, it does have some really thick puffy spots that I couldn't avoid because art bats are crazy. Um, but I love making shawls out of art bats. I do. Um, unfortunately, these have some stellina in them, so they can be a little scratchy, but overall, I really like how they came out. Um, I've already got plan. I'm looking at my bobbins for the next spin, so we'll just see what happens. I'm hoping to keep this up. Also, I'm taking two spinning classes at SSK, and I never, ever, ever get into the spinning classes. I always end up in my second choice, or maybe they're not. Maybe the spinning classes are my second choice. But anyway, I've never ended up in a spinning class, and I'm taking two this year because I actually only have ever done one class. So this year I'm doing two classes. They're both on the same day. They're both about spinning, so I'm going to have a hardcore spinning day, and I cannot wait to tell you guys all about it. I'm so excited. Okay, so next let's move on to whips. I have a hashtag socks for CC in my fleecy foxes bag from ESK. Um, eat, sleep, knit. I did not get very far. I started this um, this past month. I might have to pull it out. I think I'd like to do it in a different yarn. This is the So Say We All 
sock. Um, it's a Battlestar Galactica thing. I should have it in my Battlestar Galactica bag, but that actually has my um, another product in it. So I was already in use. It seems silly not to use it all together, but you know, whatever. It's fine. Um, the sock is mostly purling, so I really didn't get as far as I wanted to, um, but I did end up switching my needles. So originally I was using my regular 9-inch circular needles for my socks. Okay, so you're like right by my face. Sorry that you can see my chin wobbling in the background as I talk. Um, I recently bought a pair of needles where it's the 9-inch circs, but one needle is shorter than the other needle. This is the, the regular size of needle, and then there's a really long one, which makes it much easier for crazy, crazy stitches. Um, and it's working great for, I'm trying to show it to you, but it's very wobbly. Um, there you go. That's how it looks. Um, it's really great for purling, it turns out. So I've been really enjoying those. You want to have your longer one on the right side. Um, so that if, while you're, because I'm a picker, so that works for me. Um, so that when you're knitting, you use the longer one to grab your stitches and the short one to hold your stitches. Does that make sense? I hope so. While I'm zoomed in, I'll show you the, the sock itself because it has a pretty intricate pattern. Um, that's how it's going so far. I think I need to start over though because I did start with those shorter needles and my sock looks like it's really, really wide for me. So I'm going to kind of lay it against some other socks that I own and see if it's too big. I may need to go down a few stitches because the purling makes me knit much looser. Um, but overall, I like the sock pattern. It's just, it's all purling. And then the design itself is a knit, which is really cool, but it's kind of exhausting. So I'm not sure if I'll keep up with these socks or pick a different pair of socks, but I really like to make some socks for CC. Um, I just may need to make them out of different yarn to get me more excited about what's going on. I do really like the pattern. Um, I do really like the yarn. The yarn itself is great. I just don't know if I want some variegated yarn for this very detailed socks. I may try and find just, um, I think a lighter color would make me happier, although those are very Battlestar Galactica colors. I may even make the socks twice. I don't know. I'm just gonna have to see how it goes. Um, I kind of want to use them together because they were sold as a set, but that doesn't mean I have to. Life is all about choices. So I may choose to do something different. <laughs> I'm trying to convince myself out loud, kind of, that I need to start over for one, because the socks are gonna be too wide. And for two, because uh, I also switched needles, and so like, it's not gonna, it's just not gonna be the same. So I just really need to start those socks over. But I don't wanna take them apart. But I need to, but I don't want to. You get what I'm saying. You get what I'm saying. It's cool, I don't need to keep repeating myself. Okay, let's move on to a different whip, different whip. Secondly, I have my Bernadette lace blouse. Now I have finished the first piece of this, and this is for my OWL, because I stopped doing the spinning ones since I never finished them. Um, and I have not knit the second piece because I started using the needles for a second project. Uh, so they were the same size as something else I needed, so I will show you that in a minute. Uh, but that project is finished, so hopefully I can start this back up if I don't try to make a sweater in two weeks, which I'm totally going to do, and then never finish anything, right? Um, this is my Bernadette lace blouse. It is flippin' gorgeous. The yarn I'm using is Radstorm from, I'm sorry, it's the Nerd Girl Yarns Winning in the Radstorm colorway. It's this almost luminescent green. Um, it is fantastic. This is totally not my style, but my mom has already laid claim to it when I don't want it. So, um, cause I don't like this. I don't like it when you can see your bra straps when I don't have a problem with showing off my bra straps, but I hate when shirts don't give me the option to not show them. Does that make sense? Like, do you understand what I'm saying? I just like them to be, I don't want them to distract from what I'm wearing, especially if I knit it. And I catch stuff on things, and this is way, this is exactly my mom's style. This lacy over shirt kind of thing, she'll love it. Now you can throw this in the washer and dryer, which I have not done with this yet. Um, and then the yarn does pop up just a little bit, but it shouldn't pop up so much that it changes my size, my gauge, my yarn. But this shirt already seems huge. So if it does puff up a little bit, I may just seam it to hide that. So first one done. Now I have to make another one of these. Um, it did use almost an entire skein of the winning. Um, which is a lot of, I think it's over a thousand yards. Um, did I write it down? No, I did not because I'm goofy. So, whatever. Um, so I will be using a second skein instead of using the remainder of the skein because I don't want it to split in the middle, especially with lace and stuff like that. And then I have to leave an ends halfway through. I'm just going to use a whole other skein because I have three of them, um, to finish this up. So, yay. Pretty exciting. It didn't leave very much of a skein. Like it was like a tiny little ball. Um, so I'm going to use that for steaming it. Actually, be perfect. Next up, so those are those are my woes of my woes. So I totally didn't say that at the beginning. Um, 
think that's all I had. Checking my notes. Sorry, I'm looking at my lap. I'm just trying to make sure I give you guys the best possible podcast. Um, so let's move on to defeated foes, of which I have more than a few. So first off, I'm going to show you something I can't show you. And by that I mean I'm going to show you this. This is a big, massive, 100 and I want to say 81 yards finished shawl. This is also this is also a test knit. So aside from what I'm showing you right here, I am hiding all the cool stuff. I cannot show you more of this until the pattern is released. This is a shawl coming out soon by Magic Landscapes, but this is all you get to see of it. Gorgeous. Um, Magic Landscapes does amazing designs, and I test knit for test knit for her as often as I can. Um, Sometimes this doesn't fit with my life or whatever, or the pattern is not, not something that I would finish because I'm going to get this interested in it. But, oh my gosh, I love how she writes her patterns. She just thinks really smart about knitting. The light is like right here now. It's creeping up on me, you guys. i got to hurry before this light hits my face. <laughs> I'll have to move my chair again. Um, so that's my secret ultra test knit. This is what was, this is what was using my um, Bernadette lace needles. I had this uncontrollable urge to knit a hitchhiker from the oldest yarn in my stash. The oldest yarn in my stash um, was part of a sweater kit that I got before I understood how sweaters even flippin' worked. I used most of the yarn for a hero where I held it double to make a worsted weight because uh, you know knitters gonna knit and I just had this urge to make a hitchhiker out of it. Now I had a bunch of balls that at some point in my knitting career I had tied all the cut up pieces together Good job, Rebecca. The yarn, uh, it's Nitpicks palette, so it had some really weak spots in it, and I can never, like, throw this in the washer and dryer, which is fine, because it's a shawl. Um, but I just really, really, really wanted to make this for some reason. So it's a hitchhiker. It's awesome. Um, it's just a not very exciting blue, navy color. I think this is the, I want to say it's jade. That doesn't seem like the right color, but I want to say that's the color of this Nitpicks palette color. Not 100% sure, but check my show notes, or uh, check my show notes, we'll have a link to the project page, which will tell you what yarn it is, kind of thing. Um, it's, you know, it's just a hitchhiker, it's just big, and it's wooly, it just kind of hangs out. I like hitchhikers because they're not so heavy, so you just kind of want more of a scarf that's got some interesting bits to it, hitchhiker. Thought about doing some stripes, decided not to do stripes, because I really just want to use up this yarn. Um, I do try... When I'm trying to pick a project and I don't haven't bought yarn specifically for a project, I try to use the oldest yarn in my stash. So when I'm like, uh, I want to knit something, but I don't know what I want to knit, I say, let's use the oldest yarn in your stash that you like to kind of use up the oldest yarn. Because I feel like I buy new things and I want to use the new shiny yarn, but then the old, pretty, beautiful yarn never gets used, right? That's a problem. So I'm trying to do that by always looking at what's the oldest thing in my stash. So. But now I'm out of that because I used all of the yarn for that. I didn't even hit 42 teeth, which is what you want to do when you get a hitchhiker, is little pointy edges. Um, so yeah, but I'm happy that it's, it's, it is finished. The yarn is done. Uh, it's, it's gone. It's good. This is really getting closer and closer. I feel like there's like that, it's like in a scary movie where like the saw is getting closer to the, the good guy who's strapped to the table and it's gonna hurt him. Anyway, <laughs> that's a really weird tangent. So, uh, the next thing I knit was for an Eat Sleep Knit, ah, sorry, I got caught on everything on my table, um, Flash Challenge, which is like a short-term knit-along. Uh, most of their knit-alongs, if you finish them after the date, you can still turn them in. Flash Challenges, no. So I had bought this yarn because it was beautiful. I tried to knit this yarn and it was hideous. So I was like, screw it, this is going to be my clap o tea, which is what I knit. Um, I like the clap tee. I don't know if I would have knit it if it wasn't a for a knit along. Um, but and I'm not sure I love this, but it is fantastic to wear. Right? So it's kind of hideous, but I love it. Um, so this is the set Phasers to Stun. Oh, this yarn. Okay, this light's going to be awful. If I do it here, that does not work either. Okay. We'll work this out. We'll work it out, you guys. Um, the problems of being a night owl and having to record the evenings instead of the mornings when the sun is above your windows instead of directly at your windows. So this is, this is the back. This is my collab OT and this is set facers to stun. 
It is really hard to show you the whole thing because it is longer than I am tall. Um, but you really can't see the pattern because it's just like visual static is the best way I can describe it. And one of the skeins was much darker than the other ones. And one of the skeins was much lighter than the other ones, which I realized and I tried to blend it in. But you can see some light spots for sure. So do I love it? Kind of. Do I hate it? No, I think. Um, the clap tee is a really fun pattern, but it involves more knitting than you get to see because you do drop stitches. It was a free pattern, I believe, on Nitty. Um, and so I'm not really giving away secrety, secrety sauce. But um, what do I love this for? It is basically um, a giant stole blanket. And I left this at work a couple times because it's awesome. And then I couldn't podcast because it was at work. Um, but look, it just I can wrap myself completely in this thing and be so content forever and ever. Amen. And it is very soft because this yarn is awesome. It's very warm and cozy. And I didn't even use all of this stinking yarn. So, but it is done. And I love it, I think. I don't know. I don't hate it. I just have really mixed feelings about this colorway being on anything because it just looks like visual barf. So if it was going to be on anything, the slip stitch pattern, I'm sorry, the drop stitch pattern does look really nice. Not from there, obviously, because you can't see anything on this crazy thing. But when it's closer, you can see it's got this really pretty, here, sunlight, help me out. Make it, make it way too bright. Um, so you can see the drop stitches in it. Mixed feelings. Mixed feelings all around. I feel like I'm sticking in shadows now because the sunlight's going to get me. Anyway, so that's <laughs> very distracted today. Don't drink a bunch of caffeine before you start a podcast. Life, life notes. Um, okay, so clap of tea. Oh, I have a hat. Um, as part of the SSK, which is not easily that this is the Super Summer Knit Along, they do knit along challenges, which I then try to work it onto everything else I'm doing knit wise. Um, and one of them is to knit patterns from people who are going, which is pretty fun. Um, I chose to make this hat. This hat is way too big, which is my fault. I always, my, my gauge for hats, I need to learn this. I need to go down two needle sizes whenever I start a hat because they always come out so much bigger than I intend for them to. And this is like an ongoing thing. But it doesn't happen with sweaters. It only happens with hats. I use circular needles for my hats, so it's not like it's a needle issue. I don't know what it is. My hats always come out too big. Anyway, this is the, did I write it down? It's Ecola by Sarah Jordan. Again, show notes. Sorry, I'm not looking at you guys, but it's I don't have like a prompter like a news person does. Uh, by Sarah Jordan, I used U.S. fours and sixes. So um, I used Knit Pick Swish in the Cornmeal and Peapod colorway. Now, if these colors look sort of familiar to you, um, although I don't know if I was podcasting at that time, I made a Ginny sweater um, from the Harry Potter Knits collection or something along those lines. Um, I made a Ginny sweater. And I just never loved it. And because knitting is whatever you want to be, I tore it apart. <laughs> I took it apart. Uh, the ribbons are in this bag. And so this is actually part of that. I use that yarn for it. Um, it's a DK yarn. It's a great yarn. It's super wash, which means I can't even felt my hat down. So um, I did put it in the washer and dryer. Nothing happened. But I intend to make another one of these hats in the correct size. I think I'm about 40 stitches over, so I think I can just shrink it by 40 stitches and use the same size needles. So we'll see. Uh, um, that knit along ends the 11th, so if I get another one done, you'll surely see it. Um, my last FO, I told you guys I had a lot of FOs, is some squares on my Persian Dreams blanket. So I was, the Persian Dreams blanket is an eat, sleep, knit, oh, it's got my arm now, an eat, sleep, knit, uh, cow they're doing all year when you knit you're supposed to knit two um, hexagons a month and that will give you 24 hexagons which is one blanket some months I've missed I've never made more than two in a month um, shame on me but you can only use eat eat sleep knit yarn for it that's kind of the point of the cow um, and so I picked up yarn or I was knitting with some yarn and I was very happy with how it was going I got done, and the next day I was putting it into Ravelry, and I was thinking, I can't find this in my stash uh, with the color, with the brand that I thought I used, and I got really worried that I used from the, some of the worsted weight yarn that I bought in New York. I had like a whole panicky day. I get home, and I find the ball band. I was totally fine, but I freaked out. But it was after I had decided to put 
start putting my blanket together because I wanted to see how it was going to work. And so I put the freshly made square in the center of all my other squares and then freaked out that I used the wrong yarn. But it's all okay. But it did mean that I started putting my blanket together. And I really like how it looks so far. Um, I have all of my stitches that are not, okay, all of my squares that have stitches that aren't connected to something else are live. So that there's a lot of jangling going on because I've got all of these um, cables in all of my blanket squares. Um, and part of my broom, my Order of the Phoenix broom, same thing in the Harry Potter Night Crochet House Cup, is sent it 650 yards with the blanket squares. So this is, I'm going to stand up to show you guys this so that I don't have to worry about the sun as much. Sorry about that issue. I really should have thought that through. So this is the first one that I made. It looks pretty great. I really like how it looks uh, and where it's at and the position and how the squares around it look. I'll show you the whole blanket here in just a minute once I figure out how to show it to you with the correct light. Um, this is the second one I made. Same base yarn color. Sorry, these are trying to pull this straight. There we go. Um, this is the second one I made. I really like the yarn on this one as well. Um, I'm actually holding this in with larger size needles so that my thing just doesn't come off. But there's that one. I think this pattern is probably one of my favorites that I've made so far. Okay, to show you my whole blanket, I have to stand up. Um, there's so much going on. So what I'm doing is I'm using these dark green ones. These are the first ones that I made. And I have the most of this yarn besides this yarn. Um, so these are going to be my outside colors. So this is one of the early ones I made all attached. And you make this edging for it for the outside of the blanket. So see, these are going to be the outer colors. And then everything else is going to be inside and crazy. So here's my edge. Here's my first three. And then here are my last three, which means if you're counting, it's July, which is seven months. I should have 14 done. And I have one, two, five, eight. So I'm only, you know, I can't do math that fast. Six behind? Good grief, Rebecca. Yeah, I'm six behind. But I think I can do it. I just need to buckle down and make a bunch of stuff. So here's where I'm at so far. These, I can do one in a day if I do just that all day. Um, they do take quite a bit of time, even though they are worse in weight. But the great thing is, is I'm doing my super awesome color work thing that I did for my octopus sweater. So the backs are not that crazy looking. Um, see, there they are. Like every stitch gets, every uh, color gets wrapped. They look great. Um, I'm not using multiple colors. I'm just using yarn that changes colors to kind of avoid a lot of the things. So like where you see these, this one, exactly. Um, this is all the same yarn. This is a Freya Hand Pates Ombre skein of yarn. I think she actually sells them in cakes. So um, the yarn itself changes colors. The same with this one and these two. Um, this one is not, but it's really pretty. <laughs> Look how pretty it is. That's actually just a variegated yarn. Um, so anyway, that's how my blanket is going so far. So one last thing to talk about. I am doing Stash Dash. Uh, this is kind of like the end of the show blather, maybe. We'll call it that. I'm doing Stash Dash, um, and I haven't put my test knit in there yet. Uh, I'm a little bit behind on my spreadsheet this couple of days. Um, but right now I'm at 3.63 kilometers. You guys, I just started. I'm doing pretty awesome. Um, as far as the yarn knot goes, I am at 54 points. But because I just bought so many sweater quantities, I am um, over on weight and under on miles which sucks. But I'm planning on knitting a lot of this pretty quickly and I've already got a couple of projects that aren't done, like my Persian Dreams blanket and my Bernadette lace thing, um, and I haven't put in my test knit, like I said, that are gonna be a ton of yardage and weight. So hopefully I can get those numbers back in the positive. <sighs> we'll see. Um, I am also moving. I'm just moving across town to a nicer apartment. Uh, so soon there won't be as much stuff. Uh, so that, that doesn't make sense. So I'll be packing up a lot of my stuff um, and I may have a D stash. I haven't really decided. Uh, I do feel like there's yarn that I bought that I'm not ever gonna knit with because I bought it at the ooh pretty stage and then I'm like, I don't enjoy the qualities of this yarn. Um, if I have a D stash, I will have a podcast before I have a D stash and be posting a lot about it on Instagram. Um, it's been something I've been wanting to do for a while but I'm not sure if I can part with my stuff. So if that's not ridiculous, I don't know what is. 
Uh, last summer, I coon married my apartment, which um, that's the simple magic of tidying up. I actually, it's kind of a hokey idea to get rid of your stuff that you don't use, obviously. But some things are just hard to part with. I really enjoyed it. I ended up taking two SUV loads of stuff to Goodwill. Um, I didn't try to sell it or anything like that. I just donated it all. This time around, uh, since I'm moving and I have more time to figure it out and it's not like trying to clean between the things, it's actually like putting the things away to pack and then moving the things, uh, I'm going to be a little bit more methodical. I've gotten some, um, I use Thread Up to do like consignment. The way it works is um, Thread Up is a website where you can buy used clothes, kind of like an online Goodwill, except that they're really picky about what they'll take or won't take and um, a lot of it has to be very new. So or things that haven't been worn very many times, they don't just take anything. So you request a bag, and they mail you this giant, gigantic bag that you then fill with clothes. Um, they only take certain brands, so I need to check that before I start putting stuff in here. And then um, you just ship it off. And the cost comes out of what they would have paid you for your clothes. And then um, you get store credit, I think is the only option. But I like their stuff because I'll, find a brand and size of jeans that I like and then just buy them on there for like $10 instead of paying full price just because it's, it doesn't have tags on it. Uh, most of them are pretty brand new um, and honestly I don't mind jeans that have been worn a few times or dresses the same way. So anyway I'm planning on doing a lot of that kind of stuff before I move but hopefully with the lack of clutter I'll be podcasting more. We'll see how it works out. Um, it is also the last month of term, which means I'm going to be knitting like a crazy fiend. Apparently I'm going to make a sweater, which I don't know how that's going to work out. <laughs> but I have less and less days before SSK, so I have a lot of things to do. And I love you guys very, very much. Thank you for supporting the podcast um, by watching and sharing it if you do that. So I hope that you saw some exciting things and learned some exciting things. And this is going to be a very long podcast. I'm very sorry about that. <laughs> Uh, but wherever you're at, whatever is going through your mind and what you're dealing with and what's racing through it and all the things you have to get done this summer, wherever you're going, whatever you're up to, whatever you're knitting, I'll knit with you. Bye, guys. Mm -hmm.